back so today on this video i will be showing you guys how to use the core ratio rule on our previous video i did show you guys the core ratios what are core ratios i think that is part seven when when it comes to this series of video videos so if you don't know what are core ratios and how to use them go to part seven i explain a little bit of uh core ratios at least uh, for you to understand the basics of core ratios and how do they come about all right now on this video which is part eight we'll be doing or applying the core ratio rule now in order for you to understand the core ratio rule you need to uh, have a cast diagram you have to have a, a cast diagram but then I need to show you guys how to represent the quadrat so that we can use the core ratio rule if you still remember on previous videos we did the cast diagram but we were using 180 and 360 now with the core ratio rule we'll be using 90 and 270 now let me just draw the cast diagram all right so here's our cast diagram if you still remember this is zero this is 90 this is 180 degrees this is 270 and going back to 360 right now we all know that uh, on the first quadrant which is this one it's all meaning all the quadratic functions are positive here on the second quadrant which is this one we know that uh, it's a uh, sine and cosec sine and cosec and then on the third quadrant which is this one we know that it's a uh, tan and cot and then on the fourth quadrant which is this one which is gonna be cos and sec oh let me just erase this very quickly i made a mistake and sec right so these are the quadratic functions that you know and each and every quadrat is where these quadratic functions are positive except for the first one where all of them are positive now well, how are we, do we represent the the quadrant now remember with the 180 rule we use 180 and 360 now with the core ratio rule this is how we represent the quadrant the first quadrant is represented by 90 minus theta now that's when you see 90 minus theta that will mean is the first quadrant and the second quadrant is going to be 90 plus theta now that means that the angles that belongs here they are 90 plus and then the third quadrant which is going to be 90 sorry not 90 not 90 is 270 minus theta meaning the angles that belong here can be represented by 270 minus theta and the fourth quadrant is going to be 270 plus theta now the fourth quadrant which is the last quadrant is going to be 270 plus theta now when we use the core ratio rule i repeat again we use 270 and 90 the 270 and 90 let me just write them here 270 plus or minus theta 90 plus or minus theta this is what we use for the core ratio rule so if you see a function or if you see if, it, if you see a trigonometric function with the 190 plus or i mean sorry if you see the quadratic functions with 90 plus or 270 plus or minus you must know that it's a core ratio rule now let's make an example i have a problem here that i will show you guys how to solve let's reduce the following problem let's say we have the following problem which is going to be sine um, 90 plus theta right multiply by multiply by cos Let's see uh, let's make it 270 270 okay let's just erase this one sorry about the noise guys there are people outside making noise 270 plus or oh, minus theta and then we have the following 
which is gonna be cot divided by cot and we make it cot 90 plus theta oh why did i say 9 theta 90 plus theta and the last that move is multiplied by sec uh 270 let's make it uh, plus theta so this is the problem let's say this is the problem and then they want you to reduce this they want you to solve this simplify this if you come across a problem like this you must know that you have to use the co-ratio rule the reason why we use the co-ratio rule i repeat is because we have 90 plus 90 minus uh, in this case it's only 90 plus and 270 plus and 270 minus do you guys see yes whenever you see this just know that you need to use the core ratio now if you remember or if you did watch the previous video which is part seven i did uh, show or mention the core ratios of each trigonometric function for example we know that the core ratio of sine is cos the core ratio of uh, cot is uh, tan the core ratio of sec is cosec now let me try to write them here just in case while we are solving here so we know that sine the core ratio of sine is cos and then we know that the core ratio of tan is cot and then we know that the core ratio of sec is cosec guys if you don't remember or if you don't understand what is happening here with these core ratios core ratios just go to video number seven that's where i actually explain how do they come about and how do they work now let's start with this with this problem now let's solve this now we need to reduce we need to reduce first so we look at the sign 90 plus theta the first one here now sign 90 plus theta we look what quadrat is this 90 plus theta as you can see is the second quadrant now on the second quadrant is sine positive or negative now we know that on the second quadrant sine is positive so our answer if we reduce this this is gonna be oh before we go there we know that sine is positive now what is the core ratio of sine now when you look at our core ratios here the core ratio of sine is what is cot so when you write this guys when you write this you're gonna write it as cos theta okay and do not forget this is positive the reason why this is positive is because the quadrat this thing is happening at quadrat number two and sine is positive there we change it to co into cos because cos is the core ratio of sine all right we're gonna do it again on the next one hope you understand my good people the next thing about videos is that if you don't understand you can always uh, you can always um, you can always what is this you can always uh, rewind or you can play back you can take it back you can start afresh you can rewatch it it's up to you now let's look at this one now let's look at this one the second product now what is the quadrat here what is the quadrat here is 270 minus now when you look at your Cartesian plane or your cast diagram 270 minus is the third quadrat now on the third quadrat and the third quadrat is cos positive or negative when you go back on the third quadrat cos is not there do you guys see so for the fact that cos is not positive there the answer is gonna be negative do you guys see the answer is gonna be negative let's not forget to multiply here so we say minus now before you write the trigonometric function you look at cos what is the what is the core ratio of cos what is the core ratio of cos now the core ratio of cos as you can see is what is sine so when you write there after choosing after doing everything there you must write uh, you must write negative sine theta this negative here i cannot stress enough about it this negative here is it is there because of cos is negative on the third quadrant 
That's the reason why that thing is negative. It's because this is the third quadrant and cos is negative. Right? Hope you understand. Hope you understand. All right. Now we are done with the problems. Oh, we are done with the numerators. Oh, but we deal with the denominators. Now let's look. Now we have to deal with this one, which is cot 90 plus theta, which is cot 90 plus theta. Now we look at the quadrant. What is our quadrant here? This quadrant is 90 plus theta. Let me just fix this theta. It's 90 plus theta. Now, 90 plus theta, guys, we know that 90 plus theta is happening on the second quadrant. Do you guys see? But look at the trigonometric function that is uh, associated with this. It is caught. It is caught positive or negative on the second quadrant. Now, if you know, if you can look at this uh, cast diagram, you will see that caught is negative. So, how are you going to write this? Now, Here's how you're supposed to write it, my good people. First of all, you know that the quadrat cot is negative on this quadrat here, which is the second quadrat. And then you look at the core ratio of cot. What is the core ratio of cot? Now, the core ratio of cot is what? It's tan. So when you write this, you're going to write negative tan theta. Negative tan theta. I repeat. This negative, it is because, this negative right here, it is because the quadrat where this thing is happening is the <coughs> second quadrat. And we know that cot on the second quadrat is negative. There is no positive here for cot. You guys see, I hope you understand. Again, if you don't understand, remember this is a video. You can rewatch it. This, you can watch this over and over and over again, my good people. Right? All right. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Let's not forget to multiply here. Then we look at sec. Now sec. What is the quadrat where this is happening? What is the quadrat where this is happening? We have 270 plus theta. Now, 270 plus theta, as you can see, is the fourth quadrant. Now, on the fourth quadrant, as you can see, sec is there, meaning sec is positive. Now, when you write this now, you don't have to put the negative sign there because sec is positive. But do not forget the core ratio of sec. So, what is the core ratio of sec? We know that the core ratio of sec is cosec. So your answer is going to be positive what? It's going to be positive cosec theta. Then you have finished reducing this problem. But that doesn't mean that you are finished, guys. This means that you have to continue now simplifying this. All right. I'm simplifying this. All right, people. Now let's continue. Let's simplify this now. All right, let's rewrite this. I will write the numerator, which is cos theta, multiplied by minus sine theta. That is the numerator. And then instead of dividing with the line, I would divide with the division sign. There's a reason why I do that, guys. Okay, I put this on the bracket and then. I will do the following as well. Put this on the bracket as a minus tan theta. Theta multiply by a cosec theta. All right. Now we have this now. So what can we do on the, the first? Uh, what is it? The first bracket. There is nothing we can do there except for just. Uh, taking this minus and multiply everything here cos theta multiplied by sine theta we just leave it like that guys for now and then the second one we can say right let's just divide or you can also put this on a bracket guys just in case we can just divide now we know that tan is the same as sine over cos but do not forget that this is minus so we can say sine is equal to or is over cos 
Remember, that is time, guys, okay? That is time. Now, we need to know what is the reciprocal of cosec. If you still remember, cosec has the reciprocals. Now, the reciprocals of cosec is the same as 1 over... 1 over what? 1 over sine. Yeah. If you don't remember the reciprocals, again, you can go back and watch my previous videos on this series because I did mention, I think it's video number 2 or video number 1, somewhere there. I, that's where I mentioned the reciprocals. Now, as you can see, guys, look at this. Look at this. Hmm. This is a multiplication. Here, yeah, this is a multiplication, meaning this sign and that sign, they will divide each other and you'll be left with a negative cos 1 over cos. So, this side here, we're going to be left with, uh, what is this? What is we left with um, negative cos theta. There's nothing we can do here. Things are like that, unfortunately, or fortunately. Now, this side, divide. I'm running out of space, guys. I'm going to try to create space. Bear with me. Uh, this is going to be division. Now that we are left with negative 1 over cos, because sine and sine they divided each other. <clears throat> now, if you still remember, I need space, people. I need space. Uh, yo, we can get space. Let me just open up. If you still remember here, if you still remember, we know that this one you just continue with it as it is. We know that uh, if we change this division, remember if you can change this division, how do we change it? By multiplication. But when we do that, when we change this division by multiplication, what happened? The numerator become a numer denominator and the denominator become a numerator. Meaning now, cos becomes a numerator and this is divided by 1. Now if we continue like this, the answer is going to be, remember we have negative and negative, we have negative here and we have negative there. So our answer is going to be positive cos square theta multiplied by sine theta. And that, my friend, is how you solve this problem. Of course, you can continue and do more, especially with this. But because we haven't uh, done this uh, identities, we're just going to stop here. All right, guys. If you don't understand, please do not forget to comment and, uh, and ask any question concerning this. If you feel like there's something that I forgot to mention on this problem, please also add on that. Uh, if there is any way that you can do it much better than this, also mention that <clears throat> on this uh, video. And if you are happy with uh, what I'm showing you here, guys, do not forget to like, comment, and also share this video to someone who is struggling with this chapter. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you want to see another, please continue watching. I'll keep on uploading these videos. The aim is to actually finish the whole chapter and put it as a playlist. And you will watch from part one until the last part of this chapter.